Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. For the next few weeks, I won't be with you. I'll be with you in spirit, but I won't be here present with you. I'll be recovering from surgery, but I really appreciate Mark and Brandon and, and Stan and the people to be filling in for me. So once again, welcome on our online, and, and I've invited Brandon to be here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some changes and some things that are going on and uh, some concerns that we have. This has been four months, Brandon, and it's been a long time, and I think everyone is just getting tired of the, the social distancing and things, but at the same time, yes. the virus is still out there and it's still active, and it we had our first death in Dallas County, and uh, that's devastating for families when those things happen. And so we wanna be cautious, but we also are very concerned about the emotional and the uh, spiritual, uh, needs of people and the mental needs because it's God didn't create us to be uh, separate. He created us to be together. And so we've tried to be very cautious about uh, restarting because uh, we're aware that everybody has a, a different comfort zone and we want to honor that. And if you're online and watching, we want to tell you that if you have any concerns at all about coming together with people and you want to continue to watch online, we by all means encourage you to do that because uh, that's important that you you're, that you're aware of that. But there are a lot of people and a lot of families that are wanting to get started back and, and trying to get back whatever normal looks like. Yeah. And so, Brandon, you've done a lot of work and just uh, talk just a little bit about some of the things we did to get ready for when we first started meeting together. You did a lot, a lot of things. Oh, well, you know, uh, when we first started meeting back, we just wanted to make sure that uh, things were as safe as possible, that we were doing everything that we could to assure the safety of our families here at Calvary Chapel and to put people's minds at ease as much as possible so that we could meet together in person uh, because the isolation is dangerous. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, loneliness is real, uh, and those things are hard for people to go through, and we're experiencing that, may, many of us, for the first time in our lives. Over did these you, did you know that loneliness is worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day? It does more health damage to you. Well, Just to be lonely, than, let me so that to smoking 15 cigarettes a day, it's more dangerous to be lonely than to be obese and to smoke 15 cigarettes. That's pretty yeah. startling. That's it is startling, uh, but we're seeing the results of that yes. uh, because people are having uh, so many emotional difficulties and, and spiritual struggles as well through this time. But the things that we did when we re first restarted were we wanted to make sure that we were sanitizing surfaces. Um, after services, any time we were going to meet again in the same room, if it was going to be less than six days apart to assure that those surfaces were sanitized and, and ready and safe. Uh, we also had taped off uh, strategically in our sanctuary and our spaces um, uh, seating so that people were six feet apart in every direction and mm -hmm. we managed people flow strategically so that people weren't passing by um, one another uh, with, without being six feet apart, um, uh, wearing gloves and masks to begin and doing all of those things sanitizing doorknobs and handles and, and uh, other surfaces, limiting um, occupancy in the bathrooms. Yes. You know, just trying to think through, stop using the offering plate. Well, and, um, and all of our people wore masks. We were all, right. Uh, it's, it's kind of a weird time when you walk into a bank with a mask on. So it's just yes, kind of... <laughs> absolutely. Um, so this is one of those times you can do that right now without the police being called, right? Well, that's right. So, um, so, uh, so we did those things and, and we are excited but still remaining cautious as we move forward in, in allowing and changing uh, what we're doing um, as we, we meet together in different ways at different times. Yes. And, and Brandon, it's real important for people to know that we still have a designated area on the north side of the church where we still have distancing where people can be distanced yes. six feet apart because we, we want people to feel comfortable. But, but the reality is in the past few weeks, people are um, socializing, uh, for yes. lack of a better word. But we still have a lot of Purell. I Purell my hands all the time. I think I'm going to get a skin condition from Purell. <laughs> but uh, so we still have those things, sure. and we still are, are uh, you know, wiping down the surfaces yeah. after uh, the the one service, getting ready for the next service. But we have uh, loosened up a lot as people have uh, felt like they're ready to do this. And, and we've started telling people, if you socialize with one another, by all means, you can sit together if you're yes. socializing. And so 
we've kind of opened that up. Uh, we still are cautious. We still tell people, and people have been so good. If you have a cold and cough, now people run. But uh, you know, if you're if you're not feeling well, if you're running a fever, you know, people stay home, and uh, they are. And a lot of our uh, people my age and older, 65 and older. I hate to say that. I I never thought I was old, but now everybody says you're old at 65. But uh, you know, they're beginning to come back because they're they're wanting to be with God's people. They're wanting to worship. Uh, when we first started doing our, our uh, service together, we talked about, well, how are we gonna take care of the needs of people? And we talked about doing a service here in the Family Life Center as well as upstairs. And that was Nick because it became really apparent it doesn't matter what age, young and old, people did not want to be separated and they didn't want to watch Absolutely. us on a screen anymore. They wanted to watch us in person. So we opened things up. So we've talked a lot about things because, um, you know, I, we want to let people know that if there's a new occurrence here in our area that that's it's a bad occurrence, we're probably going to shut down things very quickly, and and we want you to be aware of that. We're going to try to 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 be aware of the. We, we're real thankful for Cheryl Eversall. She's done a wonderful job. And by the way, I would not want to be the governor, the president, or anyone who's taking care of decisions. And and uh, pray for Cheryl, and uh, she's in in the hot box because she has to make decisions and not everybody's gonna be pleased, but I'm thankful for the job that she's doing. And so we're in touch with them all the time and we, we try to do the right things. And so as we've looked at things, as we've looked at the needs of those emotional needs and those mental needs and the spiritual needs of people, and as we've seen uh, some of our people getting physically ill from just not being able to come together and be together, which by the way, our offices are open now and uh, we welcome anyone to come in or give us a call because we know that, that, that these past four months for many people have been really devastating. Uh, lots of things have happened and we weren't together. A lot of people didn't know what people were going through and we apologize if we've missed you, uh, if you've been sick and, and we didn't uh, get in touch with you. We, we've tried our best, but I know that we've missed some people. Yeah. But, Here's the announcement, and I wrote it down so I get it, because sometimes I write it down and I don't read it right, but July 5th, just a few weeks away, yes. July 5th on a Sunday, we're going to begin our nursery and children's church. Yes, we are. So let me make sure we clarify this. On July 5th, we're starting our nursery and our children's church, but we are not starting Sunday school. And I know that a lot of you are longing for that day that you can be in Sunday school, but Brandon, there's a good reason why we're not starting Sunday school at this time, and we are yes. thankful that people do uh, respect what we do. But um, basically, just give a, a real quick explanation. Yeah. Why aren't we starting Sunday school? Because people want to be together. I we want. Do. I have had coffee with this person for 30 years in, yes. in Sunday school, and now I can't, and, and I want to. Well, so, and, and Doug, you know, I want to be with I, people. I do too. I, you know, I'm ready to be back with, you know, in Sunday school with our group as well. And, uh, you know, we have talked and prayed and sweated over these decisions um, here at, at church and the offices and, and just, you know, agonizing over when to proceed and how to proceed. But, you know, our, our primary concern is the safety of, of our members, the safety yes. of the families of Calvary Chapel. And because, uh, you know, even though the governor has released the restrictions other than recommending the six foot distancing, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to phase back in because we believe it's the wisest thing for us to do yes. for our members. And Sunday school is the, um, lar they're the largest groups yes. that we have meeting concurrently throughout the church. And there's a couple reasons that we're not going to go back yet. Uh, one of them is, is just for the safety and slowing of the, the possible spread um, that is still, case numbers are still rising in different areas. Um, and so we're going to just be cautious in going back with all of our activities just yet and phase back in over time. But then another reason, it's a little more practical reason, is because we can't, one, find enough sanitary supplies. That's right. Um, or in the end, you know, fiscally, I don't know that we want to um, afford trying to purchase enough sanitary supplies to sanitize that many rooms, that many surfaces, mm -hmm. that many times a week. And so we just physically can't find enough supplies to keep surfaces safe. And so we're going to phase back in, you know, those things over time because of those reasons. And we do want to start Sunday School back, and, yes. and we are aware because we want to be with you. We want you to be in, your, in those groups 
one of the things I want to mention, though, Brandon, is that just because we're having nursery and children's church does not mean that you have to send your children there. No. You have to do what you feel comfortable with. Absolutely. And we have told people that we love it when people come to church and, and have their families, even the little ones, if they cry during the service, that does not bother me because I'm just thankful that you're here. I'm proud of you that you're here. And so we want you to, to do what you feel comfortable with. Well, and, and Doug, I have to admit, and this is confession time because I'm guilty of you know playing with the babies from a distance across the sanctuary, making faces and things. And I probably have gotten them in trouble different times for making them laugh and doing things like that because I enjoy interacting with them. I'm glad you said that because I thought you were making faces at me, <laughs> so I'm glad that was clarified. So yeah, and I know babies yeah. are cute, and, and but sure. but they we want you here. We, we want, want you there. here if Absolutely. you feel comfortable, and we want you to, to do what's within your comfort zone and your family. And so the families know, and parents know, grandparents know, in nursery and children's church, we are taking precautions. Yes, a lot um, of precautions. You know, it, it is going to be difficult at those ages to distance those kids. You know, it's just, it's not going to be possible all the time. But what we are doing is we are going to be sanitizing after every use. Mm -hmm. We are limiting and pulling out the number of toys and yes. different things that are going to be in that room. And then we're rotating the toys as well so that we have a rotation of toys that are in the rooms from week to week so the same group of kids is not using the same toys. Yes. And so we're just trying to take all those precautions that we can uh, to keep everyone's children safe. That's good. And another announcement, there's another big announcement. On July 8th, July 8th, we're beginning our Wednesday night. That's July 8th. And we'll be offering all age groups again and once again, if you don't feel comfortable with your children uh, being in the different classes, you are welcome to keep them with you during the adult Bible study. And so that's uh, July 8th. So let me say this again, July 5th, that's when we're beginning our nursery and children's church on Sunday mornings. And then on July 8th, we're beginning our Wednesday night for all of our age groups. And so we're hoping and praying that as we kind of begin to get back to what a little bit more normal looks like, that it will be helpful to people's uh, spiritual life, of course, but then their, their mental and emotional uh, needs that they have. And so we're here to serve. We're here to help you. And um, once again, we just want to thank you for your patience. And this has been a difficult time for everybody. It's been a difficult time for our staff. Um, we've all, uh, you know, experienced a lot of things. Uh, Brandon had a wedding and an adoption, and congratulations. And so, uh, Thank Maddie you. and Bradley are, are Mankies. Absolutely, so, it's official. Uh, that's great. Praise and God. Uh, so, as we went through these things, praise God, God's been with us. And I think a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, you know, the king was angry with them because uh, they were worshiping their God and not worshiping his uh, the things that he wanted them to. And he kind of gave them a little chance, and they said, no, you know, we're not going to do it. And then they were thrown at the fiery furnace and, and they said, you know, our God's with us and nevertheless, even if we perish, we're still not gonna do that. Yeah. And so God was uh, with them in that fiery furnace. There was someone like the son of God in there. Absolutely. And Nebuchadnezzar uh, changed his tune after that because he said, hey, every nation is going to worship our, and serve this God, the true God. And that if anyone doesn't or mistreats them, I'm gonna be after them. But the thing was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, by faith they went in that furnace and, and the Lord was with them. And we have been through a fiery furnace yes. and you know we're not just on the perimeter of the, the furnace, we're in the furnace, but we're not in there alone. God is with us and he's right. gonna to continue to be with us. And so Mark has uh, the Bible study tonight and uh, we're gonna have a word of prayer and uh, we're gonna be putting this video out for people to watch and, and uh, hopefully encourage them a little bit and uh, I will be missing everyone. I'll be gone for a few weeks recovering from surgery. Thank you so much for your prayers. And like I said, appreciate you, Mark, uh, Brandon. I'll get their names right. That's what happens when you get old. My dad always went through all of his kids before he got the right one. But I uh, appreciate uh, Brandon, appreciate Mark, and they, they do a great job. Appreciate our deacons. They've been doing a, a, a wonderful job of checking with people. Yes, and so if you're listening and you need a, somebody to check on you, we still have a group of people who are willing to do that or help you. So please don't hesitate to contact us and let us know. And we'll be glad to, to put you in touch with someone. So let's have a word of prayer. Let's, let us pray. let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done. And Father, for what you've brought us through. And we thank you, Lord, that you continue to be with us. 
And Father, truly, we've been in the fiery furnace, but we've not been in it alone. You've been with us. And Lord, it's not over yet, but we know that whatever we face, we don't face it alone, and we face it with you. I pray now that you be with uh, us as we lead. I pray that you be with all of the members and all that are listening. And Lord, I pray that you give us all comfort to know that you are in control and you're with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Brandon, thank you and Doug for those good words of encouragement as well as the exciting announcements about some of our yes. next steps. And so just excited about that. But yes, tonight, very excited as well to continue our Bible study. Yep. Uh, so for the last uh, few weeks, we've been going through the Sunday school uh, curriculum, the adult books, uh, although some of the other classes use those as well. But yes. uh, And so so we are on lesson three tonight in uh, in the uh, personal study guides yep, and can absolutely. you let people know if they don't have one maybe how they can get one absolutely so if you don't have a study guide yet uh, you can pick one up on Sunday mornings at the church uh, in the entryways you can come by the church office one day through the week and pick one up uh, uh, up from us there or you can also if you'd like a digital version mm -hmm. you can go to the notes yep um, in the notes section there's a link uh, to the notes on this video yeah yeah and so, there's a little charge to that uh, but yeah. but if you want to get that digitally you can go and do that there's not a charge for the paper ones we have sure. as long as you limit to one per household absolutely so, um, absolutely. so, so we're going to continue that through next week uh, doing using that for those lessons and then we'll be uh, starting back on Wednesday nights back after together. that and then yeah. uh, but keep those quarterlies because uh, depending on when we come back to Sunday school we'll jump back into that at some point so absolutely yeah. so tonight we are uh, continuing in first Peter that's this first part has been going through first Peter uh, and tonight we're talking about living stones and buildings and so you know of course I love a really good you know example illustration like a visual oh, something yeah. you grab a hold Absolutely. of I, I i know you're that way too i do yeah I yeah. Do. yeah so so what's maybe the craziest or <sighs> most memorable like well prop you've used so so i'll tell you that the the most memorable illustration i've ever done i'll just tell you what it involved oh my. so it involved um a dartboard <laughs> darts a balloons and a human volunteer. Human volunteer. Uh, that's that, right. that's, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not, I'm <laughs> was, not, was there bloodshed? Um, thankfully not. <laughs> okay. Thankfully not. <laughs> Very I mean, good. As far as I'm going tonight, Very Mark. Good. Okay. Very good. So, so tonight I thought, with us talking about that, that we'd play some giant Jenga while we start this study. Hey, so, love all it. Right? So, and I know you're competitive, so, so I invite yeah. you to... To play with me. All so right, let's see, do it. See. So I'll let you start. I'm going to actually start us All off right. reading First Peter chapter two, starting verse four. I'm going to read four through six at this point. We'll continue okay. there a little bit. So, as you have come to Him, a living stone, rejected by people but chosen and honored by God, you yourselves, as living stones, a spiritual house, are being built to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture from the Old Testament. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and honored cornerstone, and the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. So, you know, so I guess you, I guess you made your first move, so I'll make, I'll make my move. But, right. you know, one of the things I think, Brandon, that is just so amazing, there's so much going on in this, this little uh, first couple verses of our, our Scripture tonight, but... Um, but, but it's just amazing how God does all these multiple things at once. Like, he, yes. he, like he's weaving together things. And so, you know, so as we even talk about living stones, you know, he, he's also, you know, referencing Old Testament scripture, talking about how oh. Jesus fulfilled prophecy. Um, I mean, there, there's, uh, there's all this stuff in there about, uh, you know, the resurrection and, and Christ, you know, coming back from the grave. And we, we talk about what it looks like to be in Christ. And so, I mean, there's just... Multiple, multiple yeah. things going on. Absolutely. And uh, it blows my mind. Oh, it, it does. It's absolutely. And mind. yeah. Uh, oh, let's go to the bottom here. So, oh, dangerous. All right. Dangerous. I like it when we get to a single, you know, block <laughs> in the center <laughs> yes. holding something yes. low. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what I love about the way God orchestrates things is that so many times you see random building blocks and they don't all seem to fit and they don't seem to make sense in our lives. And then the farther we get and the closer we get to the culmination and then we look back and things begin to make sense. And we realize that God's already laid a a perfect foundation, right. but we couldn't see it yet right. at the time. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think that, that talks so much about what's going on here because you know, for, for that first century group of people watching Jesus 
walk the earth, see the crucifixion, yeah. see all the things that happened, then watch what happened after that. You know, they couldn't see. They were too close to it. They couldn't Absolutely. see everything at that point. And, uh, you know, one of the things that was so amazing is, you know, so when Jesus' trial happened, mm -hmm. you know, it happens at Antonia's fortress. And, yep. and uh, you know, the center of Roman rule there in Jerusalem. Oh, man, you were really Oh, I'm really doing it. I'm going. I'm and, going. And in that, in that place, there's these towers, and they're standing there, and, you know, Pilate's asking the questions like, you know, what is truth? And, you know, and he's asking people, you know, what do you want me to do with Jesus? And they're shouting, crucify him. And they're, they're rejecting him, yeah. which is what the Old Testament said was going to happen. Absolutely. And, and yet just down down from that, there, there's the leftovers of the construction of that temple. And there's a, a, a stone, a huge hewn stone that for whatever reasons, the builders of that fortress, that literal fortress, yeah. had rejected it. And there's, you know, there's this irony yeah. You know, but God goes to these great lengths to make sure that we don't miss who He is and what He's doing. Absolutely. And when we finally open ourselves up to what God's trying to tell us, man, yeah, you know, we, we we get a, a beautiful building, beautiful picture no of what's going on. Is it my turn? <laughs> it's your turn, man. Okay. So so he does talk there though, it's really interesting about you know, Jesus is the foundation. And that's what we're gonna go to tonight, Brandon, is that Jesus is this foundation. He is what everything about our faith and our, our hope lies upon and and yet, both in his day and in our day, people reject him. Yes. But for Absolutely. those of us who are following him, we are to follow his example. And so that means at times that we're going to follow those footsteps of being rejected as well. Yes. But, but we need to realize that our hope, our foundation, our, our, our life is being built on something different than what the world is being built Absolutely. on. And, and I love how it starts out. It's the as you kind of mentality. And, and I yes. think so much of our Christian life is that as you mentality where, where as we go along, yes. as we are growing into this, that we need to remember that we have to come back to that foundation yes. constantly. And so, yeah. so, so that's where we're going to go tonight. So, so I'm going to take my last turn here and see. <laughs> I think I even hit the camera. You might have, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't think you were going to throw things at me, but uh, it, yeah. it was kind of this direction. I, I guess you're the winner. So. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Ooh, I, I think it was... I don't know. I think there was a little bit of a, a throw there. I think it was maybe, my, you might have thrown a little bit. Maybe, so, yeah. um, you know what's amazing to me is that you know as we talk about this, these foundations that God lays, and mm -hmm. we started out talking about these illustrations, is that you know there there is very clear language in Scripture mm -hmm. that talks about what the true illustration of God's love and Christ's sacrifice should be yeah. to the world. Yeah. And so, you know, tonight we're going to read from Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and I'd like to read this yeah, go ahead. Um, to everyone now, because this clearly defines what the illustration of that sacrifice that Christ made is to be, right. where it's supposed to come from. And so in Romans 12, 1, it says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies, yourselves, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true act of worship. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, so as we think about that and we move you know, the rest of the study here, we want to take just a moment because that is the goal, that, yes. that, that we understand Christ the foundation, we follow his example, and in that, that, that we are part of the world being transformed Absolutely. around us. So, so whether it's by yourself and you just want to think about this for a minute or you've got people around you talk about this together for a minute, how can we live unashamed lives today in our culture in a way to show that Christ is our foundation. Well, all right, we're going to jump back into 2 Peter here in verse 7 here in just a second. 
Uh, and as we do that, you know, we, we've talked about a little bit of foundation, and now we're going to see Peter challenging us, what do we build on that foundation of Christ as the cornerstone? So 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 says, So honor will come to you who believe, but for the unbelieving, the stone that the builders rejected, this one has become the cornerstone. And a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over. They stumble because they disobey the word and they were destined for this. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Mercy, And so, you know, at the beginning of this, there's some division language, uh, talking about those who've rejected Christ, those who stumble over Christ. And, you know, we see that still in our culture and our society today, 2,000 years later, that, that Christ is a dividing point. He's a stumbling block uh, because he claimed to be the Son of God. And he put us in a position where we have to make a choice about what we believe. But I want us to notice that belief is the key to what Peter is talking about as we begin to build on this foundation. We must first believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came to earth as man, that he lived a perfect life, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he defeated death and rose of his own power from the grave and offers us eternal life. And so, so that's this foundation. He is the cornerstone. He's what everything else is built on. But then Peter goes on and starts talking about some pillars that we need to build in our life. And the first pillar is that we are a chosen race. And I love this because Paul notes that at this point, once we get to Christ as the foundation, belief, not birth, is that prerequisite for us to be a part of God's chosen race. Um, you know, so all of the things that he then goes on, and, and we see Paul do this as well, that apply from what God promised to the nation of Israel, now promises to those who believe in Christ. And that is the, the new Israel, the, the nation of, that God has chosen is those who believe in his name, who believe in his son and have asked him to be their savior. And, and that's huge for a bunch of reasons, but I think most strikingly it's because God now gives you that distinction, that, that he has chosen you, that he picked you, that he made himself and his calling available to you. And so, so that, that's a huge piece of us building our lives on the foundation of Christ is realizing that he made that available and chose us through his son to be that. The second is, is that we're a royal priesthood. I, I love this language. Uh, there's such a neat thing to this about, about who God makes us to be when we choose to be in Christ. And, and most of this is not from, from us or our merit, but is from what God is doing in our life. And, and, and so this, again, is a fulfillment of prophecy. Because when we look in the Old Testament before Christ, you had to be of a certain bloodline, the Levitical bloodline, and you had to follow certain rules and have certain parameters in your life in, in order to enter the presence of God and enter, to enter the temple, enter the Holy of Holies. But now, as, as he prophesied back in Exodus, we have become a nation of priests. That if we put our faith in Christ, that we all have that access to God directly through Jesus Christ, that, that we all uh, now are that temple that God's Spirit dwells in. And, and so, so it makes this leveling for all who believe in Christ to be a part of God's royal priesthood. But that also is a lot of responsibility. That means that we are the ones who are carrying God's name and honoring God's name in, into the world. And so that's, that's that third pillar, that, that we're a chosen race, that we're a royal priesthood, and that we're a holy nation. And holy... It really literally means to be set apart. And so parts of that is, is our purification, us following God's rules and not the world's rules, us, us not uh, continuing in sin. And, and so there's a part of that. But there's also that part that says that, that we're different, that we're separate because of what God's done in our life. And we'll talk more about that as we go on tonight as well. And then the fourth pillar is that we're a people for his possession. You know, and this is that personal intimate choice that that God God offers to us to come to know him uh, it, it's that relationship that God's made available to us that that miraculously that, that unbelievably the creator of the universe uh, the the one who, who holds the sun in place the one who, who makes the earth spin I mean the one who, who set that all in motion wants to know us personally that that we are his and that and that we have that close intimate relationship with him and so it's good to be reminded tonight of how special that is is that we've been chosen 
as a race, that, that, we, that we are a royal priesthood, that God has made available his presence to us, that, that, we, are, uh, that we are a set-apart people and that we are his. And so I want you to take just a moment uh, with those that you're watching this with and talk about how it makes you feel to know that God chose you to be a part of his family, and then share which one of these four pillars stands out to you the most and why. We'll be back together in a few minutes. Well, welcome back. We're going to jump back here into 1 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to pick up in verse 11, if you want to join me and read along. It says there, dear friends, which I love that as a term of endearment and, and that continued feeling that this is more than just rules and regulations. This is about a relationship uh, with God and with each other that we're building. And I urge you as strangers and exiles to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against the soul. Conduct yourselves honorably among the Gentiles, so that when they slander you as evildoers, they will observe your good works and will glorify God on the day that he visits. Submit to every human authority because of the Lord, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority, or to governors as those sent out by him to punish those who do what is evil and to praise those who do what is good. For it is God's will that you silence the ignorance of foolish people by doing good. You know, a tower... Uh, historically is, is built on a structure as, as a, you know, something that can be seen from a long way off. And, and, and a lot of times as people are building their empires, they, they would build their, their fortresses or their castles uh, and there'd be spires or there would be, there, there would be huge peaks on those that people could see that that's where the power is coming from. You know, it kind of goes back to that ziggurat we talked about several weeks ago uh, in the book of Genesis. But, but for us, as, as God's people, these living stones are being built together into this, uh, into this nation, this priesthood, the things that God wants us to be as we follow Christ's example, we become that tower that stands out in our world, that stands above this foundation and above the pillars that we're building on and becomes, becomes this beacon for other people of God's power, God's strength, God's foundation, who he is and what hope we have in him and how we are to follow him. Uh, and so, so as we build on that foundation, becoming who he wants us to be, there's going to be three main areas here that Peter said that we really have got to be watching for in order for us to be that type of beacon and tower that he wants us to be. And the first one of those uh, is that we have to abstain from sinful desires. And, and he says particularly that we're abstaining from sinful desires that wage war against our soul. And um, you know, very often, particularly in the New Testament, there is war language as we talk about our battle with our sin and our temptations. And, and it's because there is an enemy. And that enemy wants to see us fall. He wants to bring us down. He wants to bring shame to Christ. And so, so he, is, he is after us. And so we have to be very mindful and very intentional to abstain from things, to stay away from areas of our life that, that we uh, know that we're going to struggle in, to, to ask other people to hold us accountable, to, to put those guardrails in our lives so that, that we abstain from those things. And, you know, this, this might be a, a good time, you know, to, to think about that, to inventory that. How are you doing on, on abstaining, of, of resisting the temptation to do the things that are against what God asks us to do? Uh, what, what, what are our particular habits or places that, that cause you to struggle? And, and then maybe ask a question, who can, I, who can I talk to about that and who would be willing to help me to resist those things? Because it, it is, is a real struggle and we, we have to be aware and know that, that uh, there is an enemy trying to get us to slip up there. And, and then he talks about, you know, the antidote to that, though, is, is it's more than just uh, not thinking about the pink elephants. The antidote to that is to be choosing to show honor. 
that I'm going to choose in my life to show honor to God. I'm going to choose in my life to show honor to others. And, and really, at the end of that, I'm, I'm really going to show honor to myself as well as I choose to do the things that are good and healthy and right, the things that God wants me to do. And, and so it's, it's a change of our mindset. It's a dying to self, as Christ puts it, where I say, I, I, I don't want what the sinful desire wants. I want what God wants first and foremost. And so I'm going to put those things away and honor him instead. Now, the second pillar that Peter brings out is submitting to authorities, which is, is a really challenging piece of scripture. Uh, I, I know that that makes us uncomfortable maybe even to think about that, particularly when we realize that he is talking about the emperor. He's talking about, about governmental authorities who were not people who were following the Lord, who were actually adverse to the church, uh, who, who were not doing the things that, that maybe we would think God would want them to do. And yet Peter's saying, we still have to show them respect. And, and I think a big part of that is, is that is that as we move forward, even in our culture, and we see things that we don't like, we don't have to agree with the things that we don't like. We, we, can, we can make some stands about things that we don't like, but we have to do so in, in a way that is respectful, in a way that continues to live in the, the love and the truth of who Christ calls us to be. You know, one of the things that Christ talks about that stands out so much from, from just what our natural tendency is, is that one of the marks of us being his follower is that we love our enemies and that we bless them and don't curse them and that we pray for them. You know, over and over again, we see Christ and we see his disciples praying for those who persecute them, uh, want, wanting to give every opportunity for them to see the hope that we have in God, that our hope is not in uh, getting our way. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in a kingdom that's beyond this world. And so we've, we've got to live in a way that shows that. And one of the ways we do that is by submitting to authority. And sometimes when we, when we show respect to people that we disagree with, it opens a bridge for them to ask about the hope we have. And then the last pillar he talks about, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, tower thing, main area here, is to do good. If we obey God, love our enemies, and trust him through trials, it says it will silence the naysayers. They will have nothing bad to say about us if, if we live in that way that's above reproach, a way that, uh, that honors God, a way that uh, doesn't claw and scratch and demand our way. And Jesus himself said it this way in the Sermon on the Mount, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So, so as, we, as we build this, this building that God is building us into, that we put our foundation on Christ, that, that we realize the pillars of who we are because we are in Christ and we begin living the way that God calls us to live by abstaining from sin, submitting and respecting others, and by doing good, we become this great testimony, this, this beacon in our dark world that shows people that there's a different way to live. That's what we're called to do. And so tonight, as we uh, kind of move towards the end of our study, I just want you to take a few moments with those you're with or just by yourself and think about this. What are some ways we can express our hope to others who need to hear it? We'll be back in a minute. Well, we're so glad you've joined us tonight, and, uh, and, and we've been able to walk through this really rich part of Scripture together. And uh, at the end of every time we ever look at Scripture, it should always lead us to this place of response. And so tonight, as we head out of this, just a few things to, to ask ourselves about is, is, how are we responding to God this week? How are, how are we recognizing that He is the foundation of our life? And, and maybe for some of us, there's some things that we need to deal with in that conversation, in that relationship always we want to encourage you, if you have not come to that place where you've uh, 
uh, surrendered, submitted, believed that Jesus is the foundation, uh, that that is the key to belonging and, and being a part of his family, then we really encourage you to consider that, uh, to trust in him and put, put your full trust and weight into, into that foundation that Christ has set because he is good and he is able and he wants to do that for you. Uh, we also have to look at that issue of respecting others. Are, are there areas of my life where I'm not showing respect, uh, that, that I've got anger or, or hatred or bitterness in my heart and that, that I need to give up to God, that I need to pray about, and that maybe I need to set some things right, or maybe I need to behave in a different way in the way I act towards others this week. And lastly, and, and, and such a powerful part of this scripture is maybe I need to reach out this week. Maybe I need to, to be more uh, mindful, more... Uh, intentional about sharing the hope I have in Christ with others. Uh, rather than always talking about politics and the weather, maybe we talk about what Jesus is doing in our life when we have conversations with people. So maybe even identify right now, who is somebody that you need to share your hope in Christ with this week? Uh, we pray that you have a great week. We hope to see you on Sunday, and then we'll be back here next week online again for, for our Bible study. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to close this in prayer. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time we've had together tonight. We thank you for this opportunity we've had to uh, study your word, to, to soak it into our lives, to discuss it, and, and now to be challenged to apply it. And so, Lord, I pray that we don't just be hearers of the word, but we be doers of it this week, and, and we follow your example, and we be made into those living stones and that, that holy structure that you want us to become a part of. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.